Hi, uh, my name's Mark Brown. Um, I just want to give you uh, a brief or a little bit of a cover of my life over the last few years. Um, it's something I've been meaning to do for a while um, and it's, uh, yeah, it's, it's not an easy thing to do. Um, but as we're in the middle of uh, Mental Health Week, I thought I would make a quick video. So my life sort of started to change a few years ago uh, with the stresses of work um, and one thing after another, uh, some reshuffling of departments led to redundancies, um, new managers coming in, not really knowing what they're doing uh, and trying to mop up after them, then other managers coming in and bringing in their friends and another reshuffle of uh, positions within the company left me uh, leaving a position I'd been in for the last 11 years of regional manager down to project manager and then being left alone to fend for yourself and something that's new to you for for months the pressure um, slowly built up you know I was given extra jobs um, no extra money of course but extra jobs uh, extra responsibilities, uh, managing some of the probably the three largest sites of this company in London, um, and actually looking after um, a few other sites on top of that as well, brought great stress uh, on my shoulders. And uh, I think uh, it must have been probably 2015, 2016, which was... Uh, I started to feel the stress. Uh, it's something that um, people were noticing a change in me. Um, I didn't really realise myself uh, how I was how I was getting, uh, and I think two sixteen really it really took hold after the last uh, reshuffle of um, jobs um, in the company. Uh, facing the possibility of redundancy as well um, and having to uh, reapply for your own job uh, and on top of that some large projects running and looking after those uh, and not getting any real support from that company at all um, it led, led to a lot of stress from below from employees below who were working long days trying to get the job done and trying to get through to the senior management or the upper the executives and they're not really listening to what you're saying um it really uh it was a tough tough deal it was a tough few years uh and the last year um was my worst year uh with the new line manager uh who just seemed to want to try and manage me out of the business as if the company was trying to push everyone that they didn't want out of the business so every little thing that I did was under a microscope um, I even you know filling out uh, daily times of what you've done through the day I added more pressure to your workload because you had to get this thing done um, pulling you up on a couple of miles over on your mileage you claim and it just got uh, all a little bit too much uh, it was I didn't really have anyone to go and talk to one person and then they left um, it's left me nobody. Um, my wife running up to uh, running up to, I'll say my eventual breakdown um, was telling me uh, what's wrong, what's going on in your life. There's something going on. I was coming home tired. I was I was taking my day out on my family. Um, I was getting stress at work. So there was no real escape wasn't talking to anyone, I wasn't trying to, I wasn't unloading the stress, stress of the, of the day. And you just keep doing that and keep doing that and it just builds up and builds up um, so you can take no more. Um, I was getting emails that I was under scrutiny all the time, uh, making you feel like rubbish really. Uh, I, I battled against all the um, negative emails. I made sure I got everything done. I was put on what they call a PIP, a personal improvement plan, twice. Um, never been done before in the 20 years I was there. 
but in the last year uh or the last three years i was put on on twice um and it just got it just got worse and it was a nasty place to work i didn't want to go to work i i, I stuck with my team my team below me were brilliant um they did a white arse on them uh but the upper management was uh a disaster um they just um, just kept piling on the pressure and, and trying to push me out. But uh, as I was fighting and fighting to stay there, the pressure inside my head was just getting worse and worse. And I found myself having to take breaks. I was going outside to the uh, rear of the premises where I was based. I was uh, breaking down and crying um, most days, every other day. Um, Yeah, so it was uh, it was hard going, um, and eventually uh, one I was I was getting a lot of suicidal thoughts running up um, most days in the last few months before my breakdown. Um, you know, out on the road in the car, can I like, crash the car? Can I get up to serious speeds and wipe myself out or? Just, just different things. Even in, uh, I remember looking at in, um, I think it was Blue Water in one of the main shops. I was looking over three, four floors up, and really feeling that I want to just dive off. Um, yeah, it was, it was a negativity that I was getting every day that didn't help. And then when I was getting home and I was causing arguments, uh, that didn't help. So I was getting stress at home and I'm not stressed for my family, but I was causing the stress. I'm not really, you know, I can't blame anyone apart from myself. And then there was like stress at work and then just no escape. So I was, uh, sitting there one Sunday morning and it's, it's quite a, a strange feeling how quickly, uh, depression can, uh, take over you. Um, it was only, it was literally a, a week or so that I'd gone to the doctors. I actually went to the doctors and they were going to put me on some tablets. Uh, before I got the tablets, I just had these uh, spiraling thoughts uh, in my head. Um, the suicidal thoughts grew and grew. Um, and it's just one Sunday morning I thought, well, so, you know, everyone would be so much better off without me. There'd be less scrutiny and they can get on with their lives. And it was just a, a strong, uh, you know, you couldn't hear, I couldn't hear anything else but the thoughts in my head. And it was just a, a very strong emotion to actually uh, end it, really. But anyway, you know, it, obviously... I'm still here so it didn't actually get that far thankfully because uh my wife walked in at a quite opportune moment and uh it was only then did i or did i manage to offload how i was feeling sorry <laughs> and i don't think once you had one of these episodes I don't think you ever, I, I'm still not right. I still haven't fixed myself. Um, I've, I'm a lot better than I was. But after you spoke to someone, after I talked to my wife and actually told her how I was feeling and what I wanted to do, it felt a great weight was lifted from my shoulders. So, you know, one of the things you must do is not hold it in and let it get to you. You've got to try and speak to someone if it's not your family speak to a friend if you can't speak to a friend go and see someone i spoke to um, a counselor on the phone in the end and uh, some of the things that she helped me through um, and some of the exercises you do helps you um, conquer thoughts in your mind to stop the bad thoughts the negative thoughts i've read uh, quite a few books um i did a, a blog on it um I did a blog on it uh, about how I was feeling and what I uh, went through, and I list some of the books in there. So, but eventually, 
there is light at the end of the tunnel, you know. You can get over the depression and the anxiety. There are ways of controlling it and, and I mean, you're, how to convert the thoughts in your mind to a positive thought if you're feeling, I was, I was really angry at times and I was upset in the next five minutes, I was crying. I remember one afternoon coming home on a, a, a bridge in uh, in my hometown, a little bridge in Teeston. Um, and this, we had the right way over the bridge. And as I shot across the bridge, the guy in his four wheel drive pulled up in front and then he had to reverse back because I wasn't reversing back. And uh, he just sat there and he said something as I went past. And I think if the guy actually knew how close he came for me climbing out the window into his vehicle, because of how upset I was, it was, uh, I had to really restrain myself um, and I've drive off. It came pretty close to, you know, getting in this bloke's car and doing him one. But, um, but the emotion is a, a real roller coaster. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite hard to explain. And, and, you know, it's not very nice. It's, you're really angry. You can be really up and angry. And in the next second, you're crying. You don't know why you're crying. And it's, um, yeah, it's, it's, it's not a very nice sensation, um, to go through it. It's, uh, yeah, I wouldn't wish it upon anyone. Um, so if you're feeling depressed or you're feeling very anxious, my first advice would be to go and talk to someone. Get it, get it off your chest. Get a bit of weight off your shoulders. Let someone know how you're feeling. Someone you can go to and chat because sometimes you can't talk to your family. I didn't listen to my wife. She kept saying to me, you, you know, there's something wrong with you. There's something wrong with you. You need to go and see someone. And it wasn't until that Sunday morning when she actually walked in on me that, uh, I thought, yeah, I do need to go and see someone for, for I do something really, really stupid. If she hadn't have been there, that would have been it. But uh, thankfully she was, and here I am. Um, yeah, so I now I went from there. I had to resign from work. I couldn't take any more of the pressure from work, so I ended up resigning. So I was like 22 years with this company and uh, treated me very badly, so I had to leave. But from that, from the ashes came... Um, my new my new company um it took a couple of months of trying to get my head back in the right space uh, i started uh because i couldn't stay indoors on my own and my wife didn't want me on my own because of what might happen i started um coming over to see my brother and walking the dogs and getting uh getting my head a bit in the right space um and from there in, I think it must be in the end of 217, 218 actually. I think 217 is when I had my first episode, my first breakdown. Um, and then I had another episode halfway through the year. Uh, Cause I came back to work, I think too early. Um, and it all started again, all the pressure and the, and the uh, nastiness and the emails and the uh, micromanagement all started again. And it just, pushed me back to where I didn't want to be. Um, so I had sort of got signed off again and then I left in November, December 2018, but um, decided to start my own business. I I felt that I couldn't actually work for anyone anymore. It's how it made me feel. I didn't want to go through that all again. I couldn't actually face just working for anyone. It just put, it really is a nasty feeling um so i decided to start my own business and thankfully my brother had his own warehouse and he gave me a corner uh and it's um so i started document storage which is what i was in previously so i started to start my own document storage company i've been in it so i was in the you know a lot of experience in the game um and i think we started with 300 boxes um, 
now we're up to four and a half thousand boxes in store but we've got some uh some really nice uh, destruction rounds we do secure destruction which is a bolt on to the business digital scanning we've done a bit of that as well um so you know things are on the up and up um which i'm gonna thank my wife for really because she hadn't walked in when she did i wouldn't have been there and i've met some really great people now you know trying to uh, trying to get myself back up on the top um you know i've been in the networking a lot i do a lot of networking before the lockdown uh and uh i've met some lovely people um and you know and if you know you find the people that's, that are, will bend over backwards to help you out you know there was a neighbor of mine helped me build a website you know and there's other people that have helped me do a lot of other stuff um and it's amazing, uh, uh, you know, how much help you can get out there if you're willing willing to try to push yourself and they can see that. Um, and I've been pushing myself quite hard for the last uh, year, year and three quarters, but since I started the business, two years, um, to try and get somewhere. Uh, this year was going to be a big push on the sales, um, because it's... Uh, but due to the lockdown, uh, that's uh, sort of stopped all that. Those plans have all come to a, a stop. But saying that, we've still managed to pull in a couple of accounts, you know, while everyone's been on lockdown, which is great. Um, but uh, yeah, if you're feeling at all depressed, which is what this is really all about, is you know, find something positive to work towards. Get yourself out of the area that's giving you the issue move yourself away um, give yourself a breath of fresh air I went away on holiday for a week um, shortly after and uh, it did me the world of good I read two books one was called uh, Power of Your Mind by James Borg and the other was The uh, Chimp Paradox uh, both are very similar uh, they sort of attack the way the mind works in different two different ways but lining books to read um, and there's a lot of other good books out there to read. You know, I hadn't read a book in years, but uh, these two I've, or well, one of them I definitely finished on holiday and it started the other one, so, and then finished it when I got back. But it made so much sense to me and how to overcome the thoughts. Um, and it doesn't happen overnight. You, you can't recondition your brain to work in a different way overnight. It takes, um, you have to stay in your antidepressants of a minimum of six months, probably to a year, um, just to help your mind um get over this feeling some people don't understand it but um those that have been there will um those that have seen it happen will understand it a bit more um i i never thought i would uh suffer with the uh depression but uh yeah so here i am on the up so don't ever think it's the end. Life's too precious. There's too many people that do love you out there. Um, and they want to help you. Um, so don't think it's the end. Don't go down there. Rather, talk to someone before you get there. Talk to someone if you're feeling that way. Let someone know how you're feeling. Take the weight off you know, your shoulders. Um, go and get help. And don't worry about the medication. Just stay on it, you know, for six months to get yourself right, balance yourself back up, and then attack the world again. Come out fighting. Be stronger. Um, yeah. So I wish you all the best and the luck, you know. And even if you're someone that's looking at someone, they're thinking they're a bit acting a bit strange out of their character. Ask them if they're okay. You know, make sure they're all right. Give them a hug if they need it. Hugs are fantastic. I love hugging people, especially now. It's just amazing. But anyway, I want to thank you for watching this video. If you've watched it all the way through, um, if you want to see my blog, it's on my website, just go onto my SMB Records Management uh, website, and there's a blog there. It tells you uh, I've written just a, I've written a little bit in there about what I went through. It lists the two books I read as well. Uh, yeah, so go and have a look at those. But um, just take care. And please, please talk to someone if you're feeling down or depressed or you feel like the world is imploding on you. Talk to someone before you do something silly. Okay? 
Take care, guys.